Uh, my name is Josef Janning. Uh, I'm an international relations specialist. I've been working over many years on issues of European policy, of foreign policy, of global affairs. And um, I now run my own little independent consultancy called Minds and More, which will not prevent me from doing further think tank work. I'll be uh, joining the European Policy Center in Brussels as of January 2011. Okay, that's the more section, huh? In Mind and More. Uh, well, uh, Minds and More will still continue. It's just to say that, that the essential capital that this uh, little company has is Minds. Okay. Um, but it also has the experience uh, of global networks. That is, I don't pretend that I have the answers to many questions that arise in the context of global affairs. But I would presume that for many of such questions, I would know people whom I could then pull Relate along to, and yeah. integrate into projects. So that's the idea of Minds and More. Basically, it's a, it's a little think tank in itself, but one that is basically working on the network principle and not seeking to employ as many people as possible. Okay. So what brought you here to CGZ today and the Transformation Thinkers? I have been with uh, this transformation project and the transformation thinkers from the beginning. Okay. Actually, I have been one of the initiators of this project, I think, more than 10 years ago. And um, All thank you for this. I have followed <laughs> it, I have followed it uh, all through. And uh, now that I left the Bertelsmann Foundation, I'm glad that they still would like to involve me at least in one segment of the program. And for me, it's a good opportunity of to course. catch up with uh, the current class of transformation thinkers, meet again transformation thinkers that okay. I have met years ago, 2005, okay. I believe, was it? And uh, simply to stay in touch uh, with what I believe is a very interesting uh, and promising group of people. It is indeed. Uh, so, right now we are here to talk about another project, yeah. Roll Over America. Right. What is it all about? This is something private, uh, and it came out of uh, my own personal development. Um, that is, I'm a believer that in the issue of climate change, um, the essential thing will be government action uh, on the international, if not global level. But at least as essential is that people get the idea that it also has to do with them. And that one of the key problems is aggregated individual behavior. And especially as somebody living in the West and seeing what the aspirations of people are uh, who enter uh, this interdependent world and which were decoupled from this world for various reasons before, I see that we in the West have to start doing things in a different way to make room for others uh, to adapt. No, uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm producing my own energy. 85% of the electricity I consume at home comes from renewable sources that I produce myself. Perfect. I do that yeah. for over 10 years. But you know, I had been, I had been uh, exercising regularly. So I used to get up at six in the morning, go running for an hour, get back home, uh, in and shower, and get into the car, drive to the office. And, you know, over time I discovered how ridiculous is this. Take the bike to the office. Yeah. And so I started biking to the office, except for days when it would rain hard. Eventually I said, why don't I go always? And I did go always. And I did that through several years, through the last past two winters, which were extremely harsh in this country, with snow up until March, and I did it. I, not a single day I whipped out and, and uh, took the bus or something else, but I went to the office by bike. How did you manage? Uh, I managed well, uh, and over time, of course, um, I discovered that's, that it is a lot of fun, and that actually uh, bicycles are nice toys. Uh, and as my wife says, boys need toys, so I was playing <laughs> with the kind of toys available uh, to me, uh, to make it even more fun. And I discovered, uh, through that, I discovered rec recumbent bicycles and recumbent tricycles and ultimately switched to a Velomobile, which is the most okay. efficient way of biking. And also is so much fun that I was actually thinking of moving away uh, uh, further from the office so that my commute be longer. But, you know, as a, as a substitute, <laughs> I simply took detours. So I was riding 40 to 50 kilometers every day. Perfect. Uh, every day I had to go to the office. Now, and 
as, as somebody involved in social, societal, and political projects, I know that the, the secret of all of this is about scaling. Right. Uh, you need to find other people whom you can inspire with this and who then uh, become interested in seeing what they would be interested in doing. And since this, this bike to work is something that I believe has a lot of potential because a lot of people could do it, it the entry hurdle is fairly well, low. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not arguing that you will solve climate change by biking to work. But I'm arguing that you need uh, entry doors into you have to start a state somewhere. of mind yeah. where you say it, it not only depends on governments, not only depends on companies and organizations, but it also depends on the behavior of every one of us and ask themselves the question, well, what would I be interested to do? What would I be interested in finding out? And so I thought of ways, how can, how can one spread this idea in a way that, that will uh, 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 attract people's interest with something exotic uh, as riding velomobiles? And since I'm also have been working in the United States, I've, I've done transatlantic projects for yeah. years. And so I thought, uh, while in parts of Europe, bike commuting is rather established, like northwest yeah. of Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, other places, uh, in the United States is exotic. Their bicycles are for sports. You know, you put them on a car, you drive out somewhere, and then you ride hard for an hour and, and drive back into town. But this kind of transportational biking is something uh, still for the early adopters, even though more and more cities become more bike-friendly, allowing bike yeah, like Portland and the United States, some other cities too. Yeah, in Colorado, and they have so nice the, the idea was, why not take these exotic commuter bikes to the United States and bike across the country okay. from bike-friendly Portland, Oregon to Washington, D.C.? Okay. And I thought I could find maybe five or six others to do it. And I know if you appear somewhere with two Velomobiles, it already causes a sensation. So I thought if we'd be five or six or even ten, uh, that would be a revolution. And we would do it in 30 days. Normally it takes about three times as long. I was uh, just the, going the, to 30 the days. high class just... athletes do it in 12 days. But, you know, these are extreme uh, athletes. We are amateurs. No? But 30 and, and days is still yeah, fast. Yeah, 30 days I mean. is fast. We'll be doing 200 kilometers a day and more and in order to do it. But, you know, how can I take Europeans who have jobs, after all, like myself, how can I take them on for three months to cross uh, through the United States? So we had to do it in, in the shortest time possible and still have fun at it. So I came up with 30 days and initially people said, you're crazy. That won't work out, and I posted it on the internet and got some uh, positive oh. resonance from bulletin boards both in Europe and the United States. People said, "Well, that's a crazy idea, but it's sort of, sort of interesting." And it's so I said, "All right, I'll, I'll do a website on okay. this so that Probably you can imagine what it is." And I put up the website, which attracted more people. And then I said, uh, "The next benchmark is when I have 24 people from Europe who say they will join." and post their name, picture, on and the statement website. on the website. Um, 24, I guess, at that time would be one sea container full of automobiles shipped to the United States. Um, then they I'll don't do have them there? They, they have them, but only, you know, I don't think, probably in all of North America, there may be 25 of them. Okay. 